Hello and welcome to the Old Testament Theology Lecture 5. In the fourth lecture, we have talked about the pre-creation eternity, whereby we dig out seven important things that God has done before He has created the, the world, followed by creation of the universe, which we concluded that the Lord has created the world in six 24-hour days. And finally, we have also talked about the, the origin of the evil. Today, we will be talking about the creation of women and the temptation and the fall of man. Creation of women. You know, half of the world's population is women. And the Bible talks about women at length. Judaism, Christianity and Islam have very resemblant teaching about creation of women. According to Islamic holy book, the Quran, it says that women and men were created from the same soul and for which that they dwell in love. When they fall into temptation, the blame was equally placed upon them. But Christianity and Judaism holds a slight different teaching in regards to that. According to Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, which simply means Torah, Navim, and Ketubim, the teaching of the creation of women is found written in Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 24, where it says that Eve was created from the rib of Adam. The Bible says that after every single day's completion of the creation, it says that the Lord behold, and it was good. On the sixth day after the creation of Adam, he behold and found that it was not good for a man, for Adam, to be alone. And therefore he decided to create his companion, a helpmate. And thus God made him to, and thus God caused deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he took one of his ribs and covered a portion with the flesh. And thus the Bible says that women was created from the ribs of a man. And when women was created and brought to Adam, Adam says that now it is born of my bones. Adam says that now it is born of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And therefore she shall be called women. In Hebrew, man is Ish and women is Isha, which signifies that uh, women comes from man. Thus Christianity and Judaism holds that women is made from a man or so to say Eve was made from Adam but when we compare this teaching with the teaching of Islam it says that they were created from the same single soul that they will dwell in love together and when it comes to the matter of temptation according to Christianity and Judaism it says that Eve seduced Adam to eat the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and therefore he, she was cursed and she also faced the wrath of God in the form of a penalty that God pronounced upon her. Not only her but also the curse came upon four different groups and it, it came to Satan, it came upon serpent, and finally it came upon Adam. But according to Quranic teaching it says that <clears throat> Eve does not tempt or seduce the man, but they eat. At the same time, after the fall, they repented and God immediately forgave them. Especially if we refer back to Al Araf 22, 20, 22, and 122. And also if we refer to Taha 20, Al Araf 22, 20, 22, and 122. And also if we refer to Taha 20, starting from verse 14 to 114 to 123 it says that Eve does not seduce to Adam to eat the fruit the forbidden fruit but it says that Satan tricked them equally and as a result they both fell into temptation but on the other hand according to the teaching of the Bible it says that Eve was the one who first ate the forbidden fruit and also she shared the fruit with her husband Adam and thus she came under the curse. According to the Bible, there is only one portion where it 
thought about the creation of Eve, where it says that Eve was created from the rib of Adam. And besides that, we have no other, other creation account in relation to Eve. And that is found in Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. As a result of falling into temptation, judgment of God came upon Adam, Eve, the serpent, as well as to the Satan. And therefore, till today, every morning, Jewish man will recite a prayer saying, thanking God for not making them born as a woman, not making them born as a Gentile, and not making them born as an ignoramus or as an animal. But on the other hand, women also wake up and recite a prayer thanking God for making them according to God's will. Coming to the temptation and the fall of man. Now, in order to go deeper, we have to start from the innocent state of man. Innocent states in the sense, the condition of man before their fall. And after that, we will also talk about the, the temptation and the fall and the result of the fall. The innocent states of man before the temptation and fall. The first two chapters of the Bible, that is Genesis chapter 1 and 2, talks about the innocent states of man, where it talks about man and woman's life without the presence of sin. And in the original state, that is also called as the original state or the innocence state. In the original state, he enjoyed unconfirmed holiness in the sense the holiness which will be losing soon prior to the test that God gave them and they enjoy that holiness, the fellowship, the presence of God and they also exercise the power of his contrary choice. He was, he was given a choice which we also call as free will of choice. In fact, God does not exercise the free will of choice. He has just the holy will but he gave human beings to exercise whether to obey him or to disobey him. That was the free will God gave to Adam and Eve to exercise according to their, to their own will and wishes. The presence of God and they also exercise the power of his contrary choice. He was, he was given a choice which we also call as free will of choice. In fact, God does not exercise the free will of choice. He has just the holy will, but he gave human beings to exercise whether to obey him or to disobey him. That was the free will God gave to Adam and Eve to exercise according to their, to their own will and wishes. And then, in the innocent state, the image of God in man was completely holy and it was undefiled and they meet the image of God in man was completely holy and it was undefiled and the image of God in man was completely holy and it was undefiled and they meet with God face to face and God revealed his will to Adam and Eve just like the way we talk to each other, to human beings today. But uh, later, it was totally changed because of the presence of sins. And thirdly, he also exercised his dominance over the, the other creation. Now, at the completion of the creation, when Adam and Eve was created, he directed them to, to be fruitful and to dominate. Now, from before the creation of Adam, the purpose of God in creating Adam was to let him exercise dominance over the creation. And if you happen to come with me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Psalm number 8 verses 5 to 8, and then Hebrews chapter 1 verses 5 to 8, we will see the dominant power that has been given to man to exercise upon the other creatures. And so he was exercising that dominant power over other creatures and fourthly he also exercised his fellowship with god 
If you come with me to Genesis chapter 3 verse 8, it's, it says that Jehovah came walking in the cool of the day. Now, which signifies that God met them and have fellowship just like the way how we have fellowship to other human beings today. They were having fellowship in such a way. And that was a privilege that Adam and Eve enjoyed before they were fallen into temptation or before the presence of sin in their life. Coming to the original environment, Adam and Eve enjoyed the perfect environment with the perfect ecosystem. If you come with me to Genesis chapter 2 verses 8 to 15, it says that if you come with me to Genesis chapter 2 verses 8 to 15, it says that Jehovah planted the garden in the east of Eden. They were placed there, they enjoyed the dominance, and that was a perfect location. There was sufficient provision for sustenance. They don't have to worry for the food, dreams, and their clothing and their shelter. Everything was perfectly provided in due time. The nature was so supportive for the sustaining of their, of their life. And the Bible says that four rivers proceeded from the middle of the garden, and those four rivers were Pishon, Gehon, Hadekel, and Euphrates. And all these rivers watered the plain, and the plain was so fertile, so fruitful, the vegetation was so fruitful, animals were so cooperative, and the, the environment was perfect. There was no contradiction, no fighting, no bearing of unwanted fruits. That was such a perfect state for human beings to live and to sustain their life. And moreover, human beings have a perfect relationship. And although labor was a part of original environment, it was not toilsome and it was not troublesome. Adam has to dress it and keep it. That was his original responsibility assigned by the Lord. Coming to the original responsibility of man in the innocent states, there are two major responsibilities. The first responsibility of man in the innocent states is to keep the garden. Uh, the first responsibility of Adam in the innocent states is to dress and to keep the garden which is found in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 and the second responsibility is to obey what the Lord had said which is found in Genesis chapter 2 verse 16 and 17 whereby Adam has to obey what the Lord said to him he should avoid eating he should not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil failing to obey which he shall surely die that was the responsibility that Adam has to be taken care of in the innocent states. One is to dress and keep the garden, and the second is to obey what the Lord has commanded to him. Talking about the probation period of Adam, we will see the test, the object of the test, the nature of the test, and the purpose of the test. First of all, let's see the test. That the Lord gave to Adam. Adam and Eve live almost perfect life. They have nothing to worry, no dangers and harms, no sicknesses, nothing to worry for the food, dream, shelter, and everything that they need is just in the place. But that period was temporary and probationary because they had to go through a sort of test, and based on that test, they have to be whether promoted or demoted. The test comes with three things to do. The first thing is the objects of the test, and secondly, the nature of the test, and third and the final is the purpose of the test. Coming to the object of the test, there are two things involved. The first object is the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil which is growing in the middle of the garden and the second thing is the tree of life the tree of life grows in the midst of the garden and 
It is expected that as they pass the test of obedience to the word of God, they might be allowed to eat from the tree of life where they will never see and experience death in their life but live eternally like God. The other object is the tree of good and evil. If they obey the word of God and avoid eating from this tree, they will be allowed to eat from the tree of life. But if they disobey and go against the word of God and eat from the tree of knowledge and of good and evil, they will reap the consequence. And the consequence of eating this fruit is to open their eyes, know good and evil. And yet, although they know good and evil, they will not be able to do good enough to please God and save themselves from the penalty and the punishment of sin. Which precisely means they are able to do evil. Upon the eating of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they are able to do evil but unable to do good. The Bible text about the testing to Adam and Eve is found in Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17. In fact, the nature of the test is very restrictive. Adam cannot be fallen into temptation in regards to covetousness because he was the Lord of the earth and he has everything that he needs. In terms of immorality, he cannot commit it because he is married to the only woman on earth in those days. Now, if, when it comes to the test, it is related to the reputation of the Word of God. The Lord commanded him to obey what he says and he has to keep that exactly. And if he obeys to eat, he will be promoted and if he disobeys to eat, he will face the penalty of his disobedience. Uh, he, he was given the free will of choice. He was given the responsibility to choose freely, but he is also responsible for his choice. Coming to the purpose of the test, the purpose of the test is probationary by nature. Uh, it is to see his unconfirmed gradually holiness. Now, the, the duration is temporary because there was also the presence of the tree of life. And that simply shows that if he is able to pass the test, he is in a position to eat from that tree, from the tree of life, that he will never test that in his life, but he will live eternally with God. And the goal of the test is to, as I, as I mentioned from before, is to test the gradually holiness, not the divine holiness, but it's a temporary holiness or the kind of holiness which the Lord has temporarily shared with his creator, his, his creation, especially to Adam and Eve. God's purpose is to confirm that he is able to stand with the temptation and to make sure that Adam and Eve obey to his word perfectly so that they are qualified to be promoted and sent to eat from the tree of life. So to summarize, the period of the test is probation and temporary because at the end of the test, after passing the test, they will be allowed to eat from the tree of life, after which they will never test that in their life but live eternally with God. But once they fail the test and disobey the word of God, they will be punished, they will face the consequence of the disobedience as described by the word of God during the time when they were they were warned in Genesis chapter 2 verse 6 verses 16 and 17. Now talking about a temptation, we can talk about temptation in three different units. The first is the scripture. The temptation starts from talking about what is written in the scripture. Secondly, we can also talk about it through the nature of temptation and finally we can also talk about the penalty of temptation. The Bible says that Satan serpent was subtle than any other creatures and he quoted when Satan came to approach Eve in the garden of Eden he started temptation from the word of God 
saying whether God allowed them to eat from all the trees in the garden and uh, in response to that question Eve added more than what the Lord had said and she also said that they were not allowed even to touch to the tree which is growing in the middle of the garden which is also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil talking about the nature of temptation it is a progression now Satan start temptation uh, talking about the nature of temptation it is a progression Satan start the temptation from according from the word of God and later considering the the response from Eve, he proceeded further and beguiled and tried to present them more than what the Word of God says. And also, he misinterpreted the Word of God. The temptation comes in such a manner that in the first place, Satan implanted the innocent appetite. Adam and Eve were content with what the Lord had provided and they have no other desire to have more than what they have been enjoying but uh, at the point of temptation Satan made them to have a desire an extra appetite which they have never had experienced before the second thing is he also implanted the doubt in the heart of Eve when Eve listened to the conversation of Satan she began to have a doubt and later that makes her to go further than what the Lord had said and eventually that led her to disobey the word of God so in such a way the nature of the temptation is progression it starts from implanting the innocent appetite to the life of Eve and later that makes her to have doubt upon what the word of God has said thinking that what the word of God has said might not be true because the Lord have already warned them that they shall surely die moreover the Lord did not reveal that at the, upon the eating of the tree from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil their eyes will be open and they will know and experience the good and evil that was implanted by Satan when he approached her and then finally that makes her to disobey the, the word of God, the commandment of God. Talking about the, the area of temptation. The area of temptation covers the whole part of human nature. If we happen to read 1 John chapter 2 verses 14 to 16, comparing with Matthew chapter 4, the temptation of Jesus Christ before he began his earthly ministry. Now, it covers three different areas. The first is the lust of flesh, and secondly, it covers the lust of eyes, and finally, it covers the pride of life. The Bible says that Eve up and so the tree was good for food. The whole scene of temptation is found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 6. And the Bible says that the woman looked up the tree and, and found that the tree was good for food which is related to the lust of flesh and secondly it says that it was delightful into her eyes which is the lust of eyes and, and thirdly she also found that the tree was desirable to make one wise which is a pride of life when we talk about a pride of life we can also compare with with a sin of lucifer that makes him to fall from heaven that Lucifer also committed at a point of his fall which is also found in Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14 it was his desire to make himself like the most high and similarly Eve was having a desire to to make herself wise where what God has given to them was not sufficient for her and that was a result of doubting the temptation also brought wrong desire for Adam and Eve. In the first place, God forbidden this particular tree. Now they desire to have it. They desire to have the fruit which has been forbidden by the Lord. Secondly, secondly, God did not make them a divine being. 
but now they have a desire to be like God. Listening to the word of Satan says that they will become like God. And they have the desire to become like God, knowing good and evil, opening their eyes. So that was one of the forbidden desires that they have after listening to the temptation. And thirdly, and thirdly, listening to the word of Satan, they begin to have the unrevealed desire. Satan told them that they, they will, their eyes will be open and they will know good and evil and they have the desire to, to know, to have the hidden knowledge that which is not revealed to them. So temptation also brought wrong desires in the life of humanity. Now the reason for such a great penalty for the disobedience or falling into temptation is that it was first a slight command and yet it was a test of the spirit of obedience. Secondly, it was a test to see whether man will submit to the Lordship of God or not. Thirdly, the commandment was so precise that there was no way to get confusion. The, the commandment was just a simple prohibition and at the same time the commandment was so precise that there was no way to get confusion. The, the commandment was just a simple prohibition and at the same time he also specified the outcome of disobedience to the word of God. And there was no way to get confused. He, it comes, the commandment comes with, the word of God comes with the commandment and the consequence. And Adam and Eve knew that very well. This obedience to the word of God shows the presence of alienated knowledge which is corrupted and against the revelation that has been given to the humanity. Thus the commandment was so clear and and the consequence of violating the commandment is also clear enough and there was no way to get confusion. Coming to the great fall, the fall of humanity. It is biblical in the first place. It is historical and it is biblical and it has been proven by the scripture in many passages. If you come with me to John chapter 20 verse 4 and verses 4 and 5, Job chapter 31 verses verse 31 ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 29 and romans chapter 5 verse verses 12 to 21 first corinthians chapter 15 <clears throat> first corinthians chapter 15 verses 21 and 22 first corinthians chapter second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 and first timothy chapter 2 verses 13 to 15 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 21 to 22, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, and 1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 13 to 15. All these passages talk about the fall of humanity. Upon the fall of Adam and Eve, when the Lord came to approach them, they made self-justification. They blamed to each other and they explained how that great fall happened in the presence of God. There were four immediate results upon the fall of humanity. First was the sense of guilt and shame. The word of God says that their eyes were open and they found that they were naked and as a result they hid themselves and they stitched their covering with a leaf of fig. Secondly, they tried to hide themselves from the presence of God. And thirdly, there was a judgment upon four beings. The first is upon Satan, secondly upon serpent, and third upon Eve, and finally upon man, the Adam. And finally, the fourth consequence of the fall of Adam and Eve is expulsion from the Garden of Eden as a result of obeying to the word of Satan and not to the word of God. They were expelled from the Garden of Eden. The consequence of fall also brought the transition of dispensations. First, they were in the state of, which is also known as the dispensation of innocence. But due to the fall, they were expelled 
from the Garden of Eden and the Edenic covenant came to an end. And the third covenant, that is the Adamic covenant, was inaugurated, which is the second of the eight covenant that is found in the scripture. Talking about the result of fall, five important things are quite vivid. First of all, man's relationship with God has been broken. It was at this point that the image of God in man was marred. Secondly, secondly man's relationship with his environment was distorted. Animals become carnivorous. Plants began to produce thorns and thistles. The fertility of the ground was affected. The producers of the trees were greatly affected. That automatically affect Adam's labor. Now Adam have to toil harder. Toiling and working, toiling and working much harder than before. The light labor has turned into heavy labor. In place of producing easily and lightly has become harshly. Man has to battle with thorns and thistles and droughts and floods. And thirdly, man's relationship with his body has been totally changed. Now he shall see the physical death, sickness, illness, weaknesses. All these weak and insecure natures are purely from the human frailty as a, as a result of fall. Moreover, Human beings have to experience death. There are three types of death that is found in the scripture. The first is physical death. Secondly, it is spiritual death. And third and finally, it is the second death. The fourth important thing that we take notice about the consequence of the fall, the result of the fall, is man's relationship with his own nature. Now man started experiencing the depravity and the inability. Depravity in the sense man were unable to, to, to do any good things to please God in order to save himself from the penalty and the punishment of sin. Moreover, man are spiritually dead and unless and unless and until the Spirit of the Lord quicken us, we human beings, we human beings alone are unable to quicken ourselves. Man are devoid of love and obedience to God as demanded by the law of God. And the sin has touched every single part of human beings. If you happen to read <clears throat> the scripture passages such as John chapter 5 verses 42, 8, 34, Romans chapter 7 verse 23, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 and chapter 4 verse 18. Compare these verses with Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. John chapter 6 verse 44, Romans chapter 7 verse 8, chapter 8 verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. All these passages shows us the inability and the depravity of human beings to please God and to save oneself from the penalty and punishment of sin. Fifth and final. The fifth is man's relationship with his guilt. Man has fallen into temptation, which simply means he deserves to receive punishment. If man is guilty of a crime, it means he deserves to be punished. Therefore, he has the obligation to satisfy the demand of the broken law. Guilt is the objective result of sin. You can refer with Romans chapter 1 verse 18, chapter 3 verse 19, and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. Thus man has broken the law of God. Even so, he deserves to be punished and he has to receive the punishment as per the law of the Lord. Sixth, and the final result upon man's life. The sixth and the final result is Man's relationship to the penalty. Penalty simply means pain or the loss, which is inflicted upon the lawbreaker by the lawgiver 
in vindication to his justice. This is a natural outworking of the declaration of guilt for sin. The content of penalty is that. Come with me to Romans chapter 6 verse 23 where it says that the wages of sin is death and the penalty involves physical death, spiritual death and the second death. To be precise, physical death simply means the separation of our body and soul. Spiritual death is the separation from God's grace and mercy and the second death is the eternal punishment that is to be borne by every unrepentant sinner eternally in the hellfire and it is beyond human capacity and ability to pay the price we need somebody to pay the price in order to escape from the bondage of sin and the penalty of this sin that we have committed and there is only one way only one redeemer the bible says that there is no other name given under heaven whereby we shall be saved except the name jesus christ and we shall discuss the down of redemption through the person of Jesus Christ in the next lecture. God bless you. Thank you.